Hello and welcome. In this video I'm going to show you how to install Ubuntu Linux version 8.04 desktop in VMware Server Console and this will work either on Windows XP or uh, Windows Vista. Two things you need before we start. First you need to download and install VMware Server. Uh, I'm not going to go through the whole process of installing VMware Server, that's fairly straightforward. Uh, it's a free product, you can get it here vmware.com slash download slash server. Two steps. First, you need to register for a free serial number. Uh, there's a little form to fill out. Uh, once you fill that out, you'll get a, a serial number uh, in, the, in, uh, in an email message um, uh, right back. Uh, and then download and install VMware server. Uh, you want the uh, 1.x series. Uh, as I record this, the latest version is 1.0.5. Uh, you want to avoid um, the uh, uh, 2.0 beta. Um, that, that's a different product and it's not going to work for you. So be sure to get the latest version in the 1.x series. Uh, now when you actually install the um, uh, server you may get this warning message uh, about IIS not being installed. You probably don't have IIS installed on your home computer, uh, but you actually don't need it. Um, so you can ignore this message. Uh, simply click OK and proceed with the installation. All right, so once you have VMware Server installed, the next thing you need is um, a copy of the Ubuntu uh, distribution. And that comes in an ISO file. An ISO file is an image of a CD. Uh, and as it turns out, you don't actually even need to burn a CD. Uh, just the image file will work fine. Uh, so go to ubuntu.com slash getubuntu slash download. Uh, you want 8.04 LTS Desktop Edition. Um, for what type of computer do you have, you're going to be installing this in VMware Server. Uh, and so even if your computer is a 64-bit computer, you still want the standard personal computer version because that's actually going to be installed inside this VMware application. Uh, and then simply pick your location, uh, depending on where in the world you are, and start the download. Now be advised that this is a very large file, um, maybe 700, 750 megabytes. So depending on your internet connection speed, uh, this could take an hour or even several hours if you have a, a slow connection. So be patient with that. Save it somewhere on your computer. You can get at it. I've saved it to the desktop for purposes of this um, uh, demonstration, but you can save it to any folder uh, on your computer you like. And once you have um, uh, the ISO file downloaded uh, and you have VMware Server Console installed, uh, just go ahead and fire up VMware Server Console. Uh, the first message that comes up, uh, you can connect to a remote host, we're not going to worry about that now, so localhost is the default choice and you just leave that checked and say OK. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to create a new virtual machine. So click that button and it'll take you through a wizard. Uh, first thing is to um, take a look at the configuration. Um, you're not going to uh, need to do a custom installation here. Typical will get everything you need for our purposes here. Uh, for guest operating system, check Linux and go ahead and select Ubuntu. Uh, you can give it a name. Uh, we'll call this one Ubuntu Desktop 804. Uh, and this will create that virtual machine and the location on your computer that uh, you've specified. If you want to, you can install this on an external hard drive, um, uh, you know, or some other location. Uh, if so, just click Browse and, and select the spot where you want it installed. Uh, for network connection, I'm going to recommend that you see if you can get bridge networking to work. In most cases it will, especially if you're on a, a home network, uh, you'll get an IP address. Uh, automatically from your home network. If for some reason bridge networking doesn't work, uh, you know, perhaps you're in a work situation or, or um, there are other difficulties in, in getting an IP address, you can um, come back to this point or uh, uh, reconfigure it to use network address translation or NAT and that almost certainly will work. But I would, I would uh, try bridge networking first to see if you can get that to work. Now, when you're making this virtual machine, you have to decide in advance how big you want it to be. Um, it, the um, Ubuntu desktop takes somewhere around 4 gigabytes, um, uh, perhaps less, uh, to do the install. Um, so I'm going to suggest that you'll want at least 5. 
that'll give you a gigabyte to play around with if you have a project or you know that you're going to be storing more files or you want to do other things with it uh, just keep in mind you have to, to pre-allocate that um, you can choose either to allocate all the disk space now or have it grow uh, as you um, uh, as, as you um, uh, fill it up but it, keeping in mind that it can't go above this maximum disk size but it's a matter of whether um, you allocate all the disk space at the time you create the virtual machine. Uh, it does take longer. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave it checked um, and I'll just press the pause button. But be aware that that'll add 15, 20, uh, 25 minutes to the um, uh, installation time. I'm also going to recommend that you um, split this disk into two gigabyte files. Uh, the reason for that is uh, some um, um, uh, external drives, flash drives and so on um, won't support files larger than two gigabytes. Uh, and if you split it into two files, you can copy your virtual machine to a, uh, um, you know, an external hard drive or something. Um, uh, so I'm going to recommend you split that into two gigabyte files. Uh, and then click the Finish button. Uh, it's going to start creating the disk. This is that pre-allocation process I talked about. So I'm going to press the Pause button now. Um, and we'll come back as soon as it's ready to go. And as you can see, it's finishing up here. And now we see the machine. What we're going to have to do now is connect the Ubuntu ISO file that you uh, downloaded uh, in place of the CD-ROM. And you do that by editing the virtual machine settings. Uh, you can take a look at some other things you can configure. You can set the memory that you want to allow for the uh, virtual machine. Uh, 512 is a good number for Ubuntu desktop. Uh, we're going to go down here to CD-ROM. And rather than using our physical CD-ROM drive, we're going to use the ISO image. And you'll need to browse to it. Um, I uh, downloaded mine to the desktop, so it'll take me a second to uh, uh, get to that here. And there you can see the desktop ISO. And I'm going to open that up. And we're pretty much ready to go. So I'm going to click OK. And so we're going to go ahead and start the virtual machine. Now, a word about the virtual machine. In order to capture the mouse and the keyboard in the virtual machine, you need to click your mouse inside the window. And that will allow the virtual machine to capture the mouse and the uh, keyboard. And when you want to release the mouse and the keyboard uh, so that you have access to it in your host machine, uh, just click the Control-Alt key, and that brings the mouse back. So we're going to select English. And the first thing we want to do is to check the CD for defects. Um, uh, and it's going to do a consistency check on the ISO file. There's always a possibility that when you downloaded it, um, uh, there was an error in it. And it'll save you a lot of grief if you discover it now rather than later when you're trying to figure out why the install won't work. Uh, it does take a few minutes to do this. I'm going to go ahead and press the Enter key so you can see how that works. Um, it'll load a Linux kernel. And after a few seconds, it will start checking this disk. And you'll see a progress bar. Uh, and as you can see here now, it's checking the disk. It um, takes a few minutes. I'm going to go ahead and pause the uh, recording uh, while it goes through this check. And it finished the check and it rebooted. Uh, so now I'm going to head and select uh, English again. There are two ways we can do this. We can try a, what's called the live CD version, or you could just go ahead and directly install Ubuntu. I'm going to recommend that you do this try Ubuntu without any change to your computer. That will load a version that runs in memory. Uh, it'll uh, give you an opportunity to check and make sure this is going to work on your system and that that bridge network, uh, bridge networking is working. Um, if the networking doesn't work, um, then we're going to have to go back and uh, uh, change it to network address translation. Uh, but it will start the load here. Uh, and it will bring up a version in a few minutes. Again, I'm going to pause the recording. And we'll come back after it's loaded. Once it's loaded, you should be seeing something or other like this. This is the new Ubuntu 8.04 uh, desktop, the default graphic display. Um, while it's uh, uh, loading and booting up, you may see the screen uh, do some weird color flashes and some other things. But uh, in general, we don't have the problem with this version of Ubuntu and uh, VMware server. Uh, that we previously had with color depth and making some color adjustments. So this is an easier install than it used to be. Uh, at any rate, you see this um, uh, screen here. And I would go recommend that you go ahead and uh, uh, test out Firefox. And that'll just verify that your internet connection is working. If it's not, uh, then you'll need to go back um, and restart the virtual machine, uh, first selecting network address translation mode. 
um, but hopefully bridge networking will work for you.